Let me tell you, by God's grace, we are alive today. And life is the gift that God gives. Praise the Lord. How we live our lives in appreciation is the gift that we give back to the Lord. Amen. Amen. As you heard, my name is Pastor Ben. I'm blessed this morning. It's a great honor to represent heaven. Praise the Lord. Amen. It's a privilege. Hallelujah. And I celebrate every one of you. And how I pray that we will not pass through life. Are we together? How I pray that the breath of God in us will deliver results. Hallelujah. I know we live in Africa, and I think if not here, any but I, I must have mentioned, we live in a dangerous continent. Amen. It's a dangerous continent when, when you succeed, your family wants you dead. <laughs> in Africa. When you succeed, your neighbor visits the witch doctor. That's the environment we are in. Africa. Sometimes I look at Africa and no one even the shape is, is of a desperate head of a man. No <laughs> one in Africa than in other continents. Because we have things to deal with. But I give glory to God because God allowed us to be here. Because He knows that we can change Africa. Amen. Amen. So Africa is not the place where you wake up and say like other people used to say, graffiti or kitabu. No, no, no. You don't this, you don't speak that way in Africa. This is the place where you wake up and you ask God, what do I do next? Amen. Because in Africa we have the fiery darts and the arrows that fly by day. Hallelujah. I'm not scaring you, I'm just telling you that. It is a place where we must see God. Amen. So, we are going to share about being a blessed giver. We cannot exhaust, but what I will do is just give you one or two things that will help us. The Bible says in Psalms 24 and verse 1, Psalms 24 and verse 1, uh, because before we give, we need to know whom we are giving to. Um, the Bible says, The earth is the Lord's, and the, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. So as we lay the foundation concerning becoming a blessed giver, it is important to understand who it is that we are giving to. Now, I am here to remind us that whatever it is in the world, whether sin or not sin, belongs to God. Amen. And when we go back to Genesis 1 and verse 28, the Bible says, And God blessed them. And then he spoke to them and said, Go! Multiply, be fruitful, subdue, have dominion. That, that was the commissioning word that God gave to man after creation. But remember, the one we are here to discuss about giving to is actually the owner. Praise the Lord. So that we can put things in perspective. Because there are times when believers behave like we are doing God a favor when we give. So when we lay the right foundation that everything belongs to God, then it positions us as stewards. Amen. As stewards, people that God has entrusted to take care of the resources that are here. 
so that no man may boast. Hallelujah. It's very, very important because we are more often begged and by the leadership to give. Yet we actually give it to the owner with the understanding that even where we are standing belongs to God. It will change our mindset. It will change our mindset. It will help us understand and move with speed. So it was important that I first lay that. And the next thing I want to move to very quickly is why give? Why? Why should we give? If we go to the book of Malachi 3, 10, all the way to verse 12, it's a very, very common scripture where the Bible says, bring thy whole time to my house that there may be meat in my house. And then, as you proceed on, he talks about the benefits of time. But remember, having laid the foundation that whoever we are giving to is the owner, now time is a command. Tell your neighbor that. Yes. And we can get that from Leviticus 27 and verse 30. The Bible says, And all the tithe of the land, whether of the seed of the land, or of the fruit of the tree, is the Lord's. It is holy unto the Lord. Because many times we have issues when we thinking about tithing. Now, tithing is a command. Tell your neighbor that. It's important to get this right. And it belongs to God. So, you have not achieved when you tithe. You have only proved to be obedient. Wow. Silence, right? Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you. Because this will help us. When you tithe, remember, we are tithing from what God has given us and he's saying, please, give me the 10. It belongs to me. The 100% is his. But the reason for this 10% is that you may forever stay connected to the owner of the wealth. Because every time you give your tithe, it is a reminder that I'm giving back to the same one who gave me. So time thing is a command. And you only win when you obey. Well, I said, yes, sir. yes, it is a command. And so as you approach God in prayer, your conscience, your conscience should whether you have been obedient or not as pertains to the time. God expects obedience as, as far as typing is concerned. It is not an achievement. It is a command. And it is obedience that guides us in that. Okay? And this that we are giving to the owner of everything. You know, sometimes we, you know, we are like apostles. And sometimes the spirituality aspect drives us to, to certain dimensions that are not even God. Where you find someone says that, ah, I feel I need even to drive my school fees. You'll be sent home. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God is what? He is not desperate. God is orderly. But when you're gifted, and I come and I give you my brother 1,000 shillings, okay, and then, then at that point, you have an obligation of getting 10% to what? Not everything that passes through your hand, you'll be given fair exact, my brother. And you remove 
ten percent and then replace with three, you will walk. <laughs> God is orderly. Hallelujah. He is not desperate. He is orderly. The Bible says in Second Timothy. One seven that the Lord has given us a sound word. <laughs> a sound mind. A sound mind. A sound what? Yeah. But you can't come here because your parents are not born again or because school fees. You come and type and expect faith to replace that gap. Things don't work like that. Amen. And if you lay the foundation right. I believe most of us are, are, are students that are, are working towards graduating so that you can go out there and make it in life. It's in it is beautiful to serve God with, with understanding. Amen. So, we type because it is God's money and it is a command. I hope we are together now. Where should we type? It is where you feed from. Amen. It is where you feed from. When you hear in this beautiful church, this is where you fed, this is where you died. Amen. So that these operational expenses that are in, in, the, in the kingdom, let me tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. If there is one venture, that is very expensive to run excellently is ministry. And so you tie the way you are fed. Yeah, because I have one of the problems you will encounter as leaders. There are people you find they feed in this church but they have vowed to in their village church. People from Western, hallelujah. <laughs> you tie to wear your fed. The Bible says, bring your whole time into my house that there may be meat in my storehouse. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Why should we give? Open the windows. He will deal with the devourer. So what time will do as you obediently tie is that it will create an environment. It will create an environment. And why should God deal with the devourer as far as your finances or your wealth is concerned? It's because the wealth belongs to him and he, it is his right to defend it but you will require obedience through your time for that environment to be created hallelujah am I making sense I know I'm speaking to people in an academic environment praise the Lord right so why should we keep it is because it is God's nature. Amen. Remember, He created us in His image. He created us in His own form. So it is God's nature to give. That is why when we give, it should you should do it with joy because you are practicing the nature of God. John 3 16, very common. The Bible says, How God. Yeah? Did what? For God so loved the world. And what 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 is it that expressed his love? His giving. It is his nature. When you look at the children of Israel when they were in the wilderness, right? And they came to God. God gave them manna. God gave them meat. God gave them direction. God is naturally a giver. And so when we give, we are emulating and plugging into the nature of God. Wow. How lovely. How lovely. Ah, sometimes I get amazed. 
and the Christian songs. I'm careful nowadays. You know, when you're growing up in faith, you see anything and it makes you happy. <laughs> but sometimes you look at the pressure of life. Eh? Is this song we normally say? Tembea, tembea, yes, you. I don't know. Whether it's a fashion show. I, I don't know. <laughs> Pressure in a pig or a bag and now they don't sit there. Give me a, give me a shoe. <laughs> Today I bring principles that will help us understand. Praise the Lord, so that we don't tell Jesus to run things are hot, isn't it? We give because it is the nature of God. Remember, the Bible says we do not yet know how we shall look like. But when he appears, we shall be exactly like him. Amen. Amen. It is the nature. It is the nature of God. It is the nature of God to give. So as we give religiously, deliberately, we connect to his very, very nature. Praise the Lord. The, 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 the issue of money, and let me, because sometimes we get into conversations that are misleading. Money is not evil. Amen. Money is not what? It's not evil. Wealth is not evil, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, the reason you're here is so that you can you can clear and go with wealth. Fellow Christians, money is not what? Wealth is not what? Yes. Because sometimes I listen to brethren and it breaks my heart. Let me tell you. And you see, he's cried that the, the roads, not even the houses, that the roads of heaven are made of one. Good. Awesome. The, the roads of heaven are made of gold. Okay, that's scripture. That's scripture. And then you want to enter heaven with a poverty mentality. Utamoa kabu. You see, God operates with blessings. Amen. You imagine that where we are going, the roads are, are, are middle. Because God is not alive. Okay? The middle of God. So that means that for us to really fit in that environment and not be shocked, our minds have to start being transformed and we start experiencing touches of eternity here on earth. Amen. We give because it is God's nature. And I'm saying that money is not evil. And the reason why you are here today and why you are in this institution is that when you go out there, lies will fall for you in pleasant places. Amen? Okay. Why do we give? It intends God to respond. God is indebted. God is indebted. Proverbs 19.17 Proverbs 19.17 The Bible says He that hath pity upon the poor lendeth unto the Lord and that which he has given will he pay him again. Ah! What does he give us up? Yes! You see, giving why give? It is a system that God has created to support humanity and in 
Indian dream. Wow. Am I speaking? And that is the reason why we should not have this. Everywhere you go, everybody is trying to present themselves as, as poor people, as poor people so that they may attract pity. Let me tell you. When you position yourself as a poor man or a poor woman, all you are doing is allowing the one who will bless you to let go. Amen. It's a system that God has put in place that he who has pity upon the poor lends to God. And God cannot stay with your debt. That is why one time when Judas was speaking to Jesus, he said, why should this woman break the alabaster box and, 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 and waste the perfume? We would have sold this and given to the poor. Some point Jesus said, the poor will always be with you. Amen. We give because it puts pressure on God to sustain us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Lends to the Lord and he will pay back what he has given. Amen. So as we give with understanding it puts pressure. Remember in Ecclesiastes 11, the Bible says, cast your bread upon the many waters. For one day, it will come back to you. Sometimes when we are giving in church, it doesn't seem like it is making sense. Probably by the time you are fourth year, and you've been giving, and you've been giving, and you've been giving, it may not appear like it is making any sense. But when that money is used for the missions, when that money is used to reach the unreached, let me tell you, God is indebted to sustain you. He puts pressure on God to sustain you. Hallelujah. Hey. Praise the Lord. We also give because it is an avenue for expansion and prosperity. Proverbs 11, verse 24, the Bible says, There is that scattered and yet increasing, and there is that withhold, withholdeth more than is meet, but is tended to poverty. Amen. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. That as you give, it unlocks, it releases the favor of increase even over your life, and especially on kingdom matters. Amen. That is why when we give with understanding, when we give towards kingdom matters, we know we are unlocking a mystery for increase. Okay. I'm speaking this way because it will heal our lives. It will heal our lives. Because there is also a danger which I need to bring out. I, I, I need to speak about this. And I pray. Because a majority of brethren, remember, the gospel that was brought to the African person prior was they found poor people. Okay? When the missionaries came, they found poverty in Africa. And the easiest way to package Christ was receive him and he will remove you from what? Yeah. That is why most of our songs and the songs we sing, eh? And I'm talking about Jesus, you know all these things. And the problem is when you encounter prosperity, you walk away from God. Why? Because you 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 the foundation that was laid. And that is why men of God, pastors, and I know they are very 
let me hear what the pastors as well. The moment God blesses you with a vehicle, Kesha, you are not sin. Unakuwa rika ya Yesu sasa, mnacheza ni tumoja. When you do not understand, and then, let, 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 me, let me take you back a bit. If you walk with God right, things must work. Are we together? Things must work. Blessings should not surprise you. The Bible says, and these signs shall follow them. The danger is when you are coming out of a, a background like we have all done, like Africans. The poverty. You see, they say your speed in life is, is, is determined by what you are running away from. Or what is chasing you. And sometimes some of us have been chased by poverty. And the moment things warm up, the moment things warm up, okay, then you realize that people start changing. Their love for God is, is, is altered. And I am saying this, and please note it down. Success has wings. Amen. Success has dangerous wings. And we have to be very careful. Because if we lack understanding and God blesses you, the blessing will remove you from the blessing. And that is what is happening to a lot of people. Look at our musicians that started in the spirit. Where are they today? Are, are they not entertaining politicians? Hey. And the reason why sometimes God is unable to release that overflow, the well shaken, pressed together basket, is because of that. Can you trust? Amen. Most of you here, I pray that as you succeed, you still love God. Yeah, I've met people, ladies and gentlemen, a woman that I know born again. But when people are getting into her vehicle, she would put newspapers, bar and our beer, or if you to go put dada. You will remember my words. You that is watching and listening. I have seen it. By God's grace, I have seen it. Success has dangerous wings. And so, love God now, not because of what you want, but because of who He is. Amen. Hey. Just look, you know, sometimes God has an intention to bless. It's the only machine that moves without an engine because someone said that life is, a, is like a bicycle. Eh? To keep the balance, you have to keep moving. Alright? Mtu wala bariki 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 Honestly. And <laughs> these people are here. <laughs> you will see them. So how, but I'll come to that as, as I conclude, but I just needed to, to bring that up. Praise God. Now, if we are to make an impact as givers and really bring the glory and remove the shame from the kingdom. Okay? There are certain things, ladies and gentlemen, that we need to understand. Now, you see, God is not a magician, tell you anybody. But we treat him like one. No wonder you hear people singing and you hear people say, Muganga wangu ni Yesu. Since when did Jesus start practicing witchcraft? You've heard these things, right? Muganga wangu ni Yesu. Also, we just give you the yeah. 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 for women. <laughs> Let me tell you, the person saying that needs deliverance. Yes, we see Uganda. Yes, we want our mom. 
Otherwise, when he was being baptized and the Holy Ghost came, you know, and the same man, this is my beloved Moga. about the labor part of faith. Amen. Amen. The labor part of faith. Because faith without works is what? Yes. yes. I know we, you know Christians and brethren, we love shortcuts, spiritual shortcuts. God does not look at works, isn't it? <laughs> we are not justified by works. Now, managing finances requires competence. Amen. It requires competence. I told you that the Bible says God has not given us a spirit of fear or timidity, but of love, power, and a sound mind. A sound mind. A regenerated brain. Let me tell you something. For you to really, now this is about the sustainers, I, I think I'm following up the, 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 the bullet you gave me. Now, for sustainers into this, for you to become an authority into this, one of the things you must realize is that attracting wealth will require competence and a build-up of capability. And that is the reason why you will require, even as a, I know many of you are saying, oh, I will start a big business. The real work of the multiplication and the fruitfulness, then you must launch yourself into the superior knowledge in that particular area. What you are going to say to your son? Hallelujah. There is a time for tongues and there is a time for interaction. Bottles of oil, you'll find them when you leave this place. Bottles of oil, 
with his photo there and say, this one, go pour into the land you want. <laughs> possess, possess. Possess, possess. You are told, go out there, possess the vehicles. You are going to get the car, you are going to get the room. Then you call yourself a matai. <laughs> Amen. Do you know Joel Joel 2? Is it Joel 2? As the Bible says in the, in the last days. 2.28. Amen. The Bible says that and your young men shall do good. Shall say this. Let me tell you, God's resources are directed to vision. Ah, watu wa Mungu najua leo kuna wanatamani nimalize haraka sana. Hmm? Amen. You see, the Bible also talks about where there is no vision, people perish. That should be in Proverbs. Is it 28, 19 or something like that? Wasomi wa Biblia siku na wale kwa kwa certificate sahihi. Proverbs, is it 28, 19? Can somebody try and help us with it? Yeah? Because this is where now the rubber meets the road. Praise God. Anybody there? What does it say? Yeah? Is it 29, 18? 28, 19. 20, 19. Where is no vision? We should do one of those. Ah, yeah, it's 2018. That where there is no vision, the people perish, isn't it? Now listen, the perishing here is not about death. It is being stripped of honor and dignity. Are we together? So the resources of God are as skewed to us where there is vision. Praise the Lord. The resources of God that will make you an authority. Now, they are skewed to us vision. Kenya does not receive grants from China because it is Kenya. It is the project that, the proposal they give, that convinces China to give Kenya. Resources are, or rather, are directed towards vision. Wow. Do you know why I'm saying this? You will be a faithful believer who prays and fasts, okay? And you want to start a business and you have not carried out due diligence. That's why people are falling into pyramids and losing money. I have a, a friend, a pastor, who lost three, amen, who lost three million, three years. That he was just told by another pastor, there's a place you put money in, you earn after every month. The man. <laughs> this friend of mine took fear from Barclays Bank. It affected his finances. It affected his family. They moved away from the house they were in. Because it was nothing of that sort. And that is what brethren are doing. Let me tell you something. Excellence is a product of diligence. Amen. Amen. Hey, you want to be a farmer, please sit down. Locate successful farmers. Not some villagers who call themselves farmers and they have one stock of sugar cane. Please. <laughs> Locate successful farmers that you may be influential. There is a, the labor part of faith. There is the labor part of faith where we must put diligence into action. I'm a sales professional. I have worked for 20 good years in the sales profession. In this region, I am one of the experts in my last career, where I left uh, November 2020, I was working for Vivo Energy, and I was sitting in the regional office, managing 16 countries directly, nine on a dotted line. You tell me. After praying and fasting and tongues, my brother, I have to understand what it takes to succeed. 
I used to sleep at three. I'm managing the curtains in West Africa. Six p.m. our time is there at three p.m. That's when they're energetic and they want you to engage. When I finish, I have to go get into the, you know, the, the, the Google teachers and understand the best presentation skills. You know, excels building dashboards. Yes, I'm a pastor. <laughs> Why? Because when I'm going to present before the, 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 the people in the vice presidents and the, the leadership, I remember the first time when I joined the business and, you know, I was thanking God and I was asked to give the first presentation and I gave a PowerPoint. The vice president told my line manager, suck this one. Fire him. This man from Ghana came and told me, hey, which, what, he was me. He said, which presentation is this? I hear, I said, I, I did my best. He told me I've been told to fire but I will not do it because I've just come in. He was a born again. I've just come in and I need to understand the dynamics. But that alone pushed me back to ask, where is the problem? The problem was not prayer. The problem was not Christ. The problem was capacity and capability, competence. I started sleeping at three. By the time I was leaving that place, I met the vice president himself. The guy shook my hand. I built manuals that are being used in Africa today. Let me tell you, Tafadali, forget about these things of anointed water from Jordan. It is mediocre. <laughs> it took a man of influence. I had this from a man of God and I said, this is beautiful. Who went to Pilate and said, give me the body of Christ. Where were the disciples? A man of influence who had his own grave. A man of influence. God is calling us to be people of influence. But we must, we must categorically, deliberately decide we must build our ability and capacity. And excellence must be our third name. Praise God. Imagine a man of influence like I said, I don't know where the disciples were. A man of influence went and said, give me. And he was given, he carried the body. And where he laid it, resurrection took place there. <laughs> there are decisions that God, let me tell you. What kind of people do we want to become? Ladies and gentlemen, you cannot love, sleep, and succeed. Amen. We must be leaders. We must read the word. We must read content that is superior in the lives we are pursuing. If we are to sustain the authority, in, even in the, in the finances. Otherwise, we will just be called prayer warriors. But we want to be prayer warriors that can command. We come and say, you know what? We are going to build this church. We are going to do this. We are going to do that. Praise God. Yeah. They are Christians. That's why you hear funny songs. Someone doesn't go to school and decides to see Bingunia Kuna degree. Let me tell you, so after Jehanna Mwakuna. Are we together? Let's not, let's not waste the opportunity God has given us. Leave this place today saying, I want to be an authority. They are brethren, you will have to shed off your life. When I was at the Polytechnic, I told my fellow brethren, listen, when it is time to read, read. Otherwise, you go around like a bee, testifying at your own academic risk. Amen. Are you blessed? I am done. Right.